My name is Sarah Dayan. I'm an engineer working on front-end libraries at Algolia. And today I will show you how to build truly outstanding and resilient search experiences. Again, by show of hands, who has never heard of Algolia before? Very few people. So you may not know Algolia, but you probably know what search is. You've seen it on media sites like YouTube or on e-commerce sites like Amazon, and obviously on Google. And an essential feature that these big, uh, this big sites share is great search. They have many developers working on search full-time, making it fast, forgive, typing mistakes, or even answer natural questions such as, who won the World Cup? But building search is actually hard. Very few sites can have a dedicated team to build and maintain it. And this is why, unfortunately, many sites and apps have mediocre search. However, because people spend all their time on YouTube and Amazon and Google, they expect the same quality everywhere. They don't know that search is hard. All they know is whether it works, or not. Really great search starts with two principles, immediate feedback and relevant results. Typing in a search box is a conversation. It's organic, it's messy, you mistype, you start, o you start over, etc. You need immediate feedback to know if you're going in the right direction. And the more delay you experience, the more frustrating it feels and the more likely you are to give up. You also expect search to be excellent at understanding your intent, even when you misspell or forget words. Like if you type Rihanna wrong and you put the H, I don't know where, you, you still wanna find her, right? So, and, and you know, that's the thing. You don't have time to learn how this specific search on that specific site works. Like the machine needs to understand you. So this is, all like what Algolia provides. You type a search query, but instead of hitting your database or some, some custom infra, it queries the Algolia search API, which returns the best results in a few milliseconds. So this here is an example of the Tailwind CSS documentation with their Algolia powered search. That's sleek. But let's look at a remix example. So this is a Remix site that I bootstrapped with the Remix Indie stack. So we get a SQLite database, we have a Prisma ORM, we have cookie-based auth, and also, obviously, uses Algolia to power its search and discovery experience. When you click the search field, you get a search model with a rich as-you-type experience. And it produces immediate feedback with a near-zero latency, relevant information to help me pick the right results with that nice little preview panel, and also quick access, because when I find what I want, I can just hit enter, and it plays the, ne the next episode. With Algolia, one thing to know is that all searches happen client-side. Every keystroke triggers a network request. So the engine is optimized for receiving many search queries in a, in a short time span and de de delivering instant results. No need to debounce. Like you don't debounce with Algolia. So you get a delightful experience that answers faster than you can even think. And when I don't find what I need in the model, I can navigate to a more exhaustive search page. So here I type Tarantino but this is not what I'm looking for, so I can just go all results for Tarantino, and what I will get is more screen real estate, I have infinite scrolling, so I can browse through everything, like I see everything, go to the bottom, but I also have filters, so I can drill down and refine my search. And yeah, that was four rooms, that's exactly what I was looking for. So this experience uses two Algolia UI libraries, autocomplete, 
and React instant search hooks. So this is the code here that you see of the search model, and it uses autocomplete. And this is the search page that you just saw, which uses React instant search hooks. These libraries, plus the Algolia search client for JavaScript, handle the heavy lifting of building search UIs. All right, this search is nice. It's probably better than most search that you see online. But it's not exceptional. This is not what I, or most of my coworkers, would call outstanding. So let's see how we can get there with some help from Remix and Algolia. So let's go back to the principles of really great search. The first thing we established is that the user needs immediate feedback. So Algolia is known for speed. You just saw how search results appear instantly when you type, right? All right. But what happens when the network is slow? How good is it that Algolia can return like, search results in milliseconds if you're on the subway? And it takes forever to even send a network request. So the Remix team often says that they keep a close eye on the network tab to control the quality of the user experience. I believe this is also an excellent way to uh, understand client-side search and identify potential bottlenecks. So let's load the search page that you just saw. We're gonna, we're gonna add the search query in the URL so we pre-fill it with some data. So the browser first loads, like you just saw here, the browser first loads the HTML page, right? And this loads the assets. So our search code is somewhere in those JavaScript chunks, right? So the browser needs to load them, parse them, then execute them before any search query can trigger. So this is what you see at the end, like this is the network request to Algolia. It only happened there because we had to download all that JavaScript. Now, this was recorded on a pretty fast network, so this was barely visible when we loaded the page. Let's repeat the experience with a throttle network, let's say slow 3G. I hope you feel comfortable with silence. All right, this is embarrassing. This is slow. This is excruciating. <sighs> Okay, finally, we have arrived. So same dependencies, they're loading in the same order, but now it's like you're seeing it in slow motion, right? And see that red line here, that's the request to Algolia, it even timed out because of the latency. So fortunately, we have the search client that retried this query transparently, right? Like after one second, it retried, but the overhead adds up. And all this time, you have your user who's waiting around like this, waiting for something, looking at a blank screen for a good 15 seconds. That's not acceptable. But this is a pretty good representation of what most sites feel like on the subway, on public Wi-Fi's, in conference Wi-Fi, or in places without high-speed broadband internet, you know? And nobody in that situation cares that your search is fast when the internet is good. Like, <laughs> you know, for them, your search is broken. And they're actually right. There is no right version of your website. There are many versions of your website, and they're all right. So let's analyze the, the network tab. Right now, the user needs to download a lot of bytes to get the search functionality. First, they have a small empty HTML page, right? but then they have a ton of JavaScript. You have React, Remix, React Instant Search Hooks, Autocomplete, and your custom code, and whatever crazy libraries you're downloading, right? All these bytes are really expensive on a limited connection. What we are aiming for is graceful degradation. We want to keep our great search, but we also want to fall back on an experience that delivers essential content and functionality when we are in a less optimal setting. The priority for users on slow internet is to get something on that page as quickly as possible. They don't care about as you type, they just want results. 
How do we do that? Well, we do not control the user's internet speed, right? But the one thing that does not change is your server speed. And this is where Remix helps us. Because Remix can run your code on the server, meaning that it can handle some of the work ahead of time instead of doing everything on the client. So think like loading, but also CPU, all that can be done on a machine that's likely faster than a budget phone. So to do this, you implement a loader. This loader is a function on the route that you want to render on the server. And Remix is going to fetch this data, provide it to the route, render it as HTML, and ship that whole thing pre-rendered to the client. On Algolia's side, we have React Instance or Chooks, which provides server-side APIs. So we can fetch a first set of search results on the server and provide it to Instant Search. So the user gets a pre-rendered search page with results without having to wait for an initial client-side request. All right, let's stitch all that together. So in a loader function, we use get server state, and that's going to compute the initial search state. See, so we pass it the search component in which we have all our instant search code. So we mount it in here, it's going to uh, like um, execute it and then walk the index to find all the things that it needs to grab the server state, right? Notice that we pass it the URL that we grab from the request, so we're going to forward any query parameters that might be there. So the Q equals Tarantino, for example. Then in the route component, we initialize instant search with the server state thanks to instant search SSR provider. And when you request the page as a user, the server is going to render it all into HTML and send that to the browser. So you get search results even before loading any JavaScript. Let's test it out. Side-by-side -side comparison on slow 3G. And five seconds. With SSR, we've divided loading time by three. It, it's not even finished fetching uh, without the SSR. Oh, finally. So within five seconds, realize that users on limited internet can view search results for their query instead of waiting around for JavaScript features that are never gonna be optimal for them anyway. And notice now, when you look at the network tab, the document is a bit bigger. Obviously, we are pre-rendering a bit more HTML. But I don't know if you remember uh, the, like, the, how much time it took to load before. It was 2.07, and now it's 2.77. So 0, uh, 07 is the delta here. And right away, you get results. HTML has just become your only bottleneck. Let that sink in. And this will always be a much better experience than a blank page and waiting for over 140 kilobytes of asset loading and parsing and execution and a client site network round trip. And everyone benefits from it. Like, let's go to a, back, uh, a fast connection. Here, when you use, like you're on fast connection and you do the same thing, boom, there's no longer a blank flash without results. You know, like blue page with nothing in it. So the experience feels faster, perceived performance. And once the page is loaded, all Goliath's client side search takes over, right? So users, uh, the users can benefit from instant as you type speed. Like they get the best of both worlds. They have great first paint, and then they have immediate as you type results. Beautiful. Now that we've taken care of speed, let's look at relevance. Algolia provides excellent relevance out of the box. It's typo tolerant, it supports synonyms, you can provide custom ranking based on business metrics like popularity, number of sales, whatever, and a lot more cool stuff. Honestly, I don't have enough time in that whole conference to tell you all about the Algolia relevance, unless you wanna come see me and we can talk all about that. Uh, so as soon as you type something, you're guaranteed to get results that make sense. Okay. But what if you did not type anything yet? 
how can we show relevant results when there's nothing to relate the data to? So right now you're probably thinking, well, it's a search, like of course you're gonna type something. Well, let's look at the, the search model. So when you start typing, the autocomplete shows relevant, uh, relevant results and this nice preview, so I understand why I have those results. Now, let's clear the query. Before there is a query, you also get results, right? But they don't seem to be related to anything. There's no query, I see the results for uh, like, mm, okay. And this uh, is actually the custom ranking of the Algolia index, right? This is the, the last ranking criterion of the formula. And since there is no query, right now it's sorting the items by popularity. So this is basically the most popular shows. This is not terrible, but it feels pretty random. Like, to me, as a logged in user, I don't know about Moon Knight. I don't know about you, but I. I don't know what it is. We can do a lot better than that. We could choose to display nothing at all when there's no query. Like, no query, we just don't display results. But I think it kind of sucks, you know? This is clearly a missed opportunity to inspire users and help them discover things that they might like. Like, search does not exist in a vacuum, right? We are in a, in a real site here. We have authentication, we have a logged in user. We have access to interesting data. And while we cannot see the future, we can look into the past for inspiration. For example, we can check the database and look for the shows that the, the logged in users watch several times. Apparently, this one likes Stranger Things. We also know that Stranger Things has a new season coming up. And you know that user is probably interested in that, so maybe we can let them know. So with Remix and the Indie Stack, I can grab this data really easily from my, SQ, uh, my SQLite database uh, with a Prisma ORM and provide it to my front end. So all it takes is using uh, the loader and a custom hook so I can expose this to uh, everywhere in my application, in my front end. And autocomplete uh, on its end accepts any source, right? It doesn't only accept Algolia source. So I can take this data and set it as a static source, right? And the sources API exposes this uh, get sources function. So I can, what I can do is early return our new source to only show it when the query is empty. Now, when opening the search, I get relevant information even before I express any intent. And oh, apparently, I like the crown too, and it's coming up this year, so I'm really happy. And you know, it's not, it's not available yet, but I can say, okay, remind me about that, I can know when it's gonna happen, so I get useful information from that. So if I came here looking for something specific, I can just disregard that and start typing. I'm already focused, I don't care. But if I came here to browse, I get interesting information based on my interactions history. So the site cares about me. And this here is the most relevant data for this situation. And what I love about that is it pushes, it, it really pushes us further than just search. Like I type a query, I get a search. We are enabling discovery by surfacing interested, interesting data out of tens of thousands of possibilities. And because we are computing this data on the server, the experience is immediate, you know? These suggestions, they do not depend on user input. They do not need to be real time, right? So it makes no sense to store them in Algolia or fetching them client side. So I can just grab them in the loader. This way the dates are gonna be accurate, but then I'm good. And this way, when opening the modal, the data is already here. So there's no spinner, there's no client-side request that responds with way much data, uh, way, way more data than I need. The data is here, almost for free. All I pay is the work on the client and the little extra HTML. 
Now, there are many things that we could leverage to refine this experience further. Many browser APIs, many services. I, I, I'm a nerd, I would love to do that. But you know, what, what matters here is that the tech we use is only a springboard for user experience. And this is by putting UX first, not technology that we truly improve the app. Algolia itself does not make your search extraordinary. Remix by itself will not make your site incredible, but they give you a head start because now you do not have to build your own framework. You do not have to reinvent search. You do not have to read this over-optimistic blog post telling you that you can turn Redis into a search engine or listen to five podcast episodes to understand the difference between CSR and SSR and SSG and ISR and DPR and God knows what. You can claim all this time back and mobilize it on where you can truly make a difference. You now have an opportunity to build something exceptional. So you can find this demo by flashing this code or go on that link. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my team. Uh, we are front end experiences at Algolia. Software engineering is a team sport, right? It is easy for me to come on stage you know, and show you all that, but it takes a village to build something like that. So shout out to my team and thank you. <laughs>